Good morning, good afternoon, good night, or, or, good morning, afternoon, name, everybody. My name is Mike at Filmboy24. Wow. And I'm going to answer one of the most popular questions that I get. I'm going to answer that question right now. And by the way, yes. Uh, the, the, sorry, I get this question, not all the time, but it, but it comes up occasionally. Can you shoot Vision 3's 500T in a camera like this, or, you know, there's some like this, that, that really aren't meant to meter 500 speed film? This particular example that I have right now, right now, it's a Canon 514XL camera. It's a very popular camera amongst upper level hobbyists or people that just want good quality images. Uh, what it's capable of, 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 of exposing properly anyway, or supposedly, is anything from about 25 ISO up to about 250. That's because there's really only a couple of pin options in here. And by pin options, I mean little pins that tell the camera what ISO film you have inside the camera. So I've done a complete breakdown and a, and a whole video on this camera right here. If you want to check it out, please do. I'll put a card up there somewhere. So today I'm going to, I've done it before, but today I'm officially going to answer the age old question of can you shoot 500T and expect it to, to expose relatively well in a camera like this. So what I did is I took my family to the Brevard Zoo here in Florida. And it was a pretty decent day, a little overcast, but, but pretty decent day. And I loaded this little guy up with this film right there, Vision 3 500T, brand spanking new right from Kodak. Now, a couple quick things. This camera does have the capability of flipping the 85 filter in front of the film or behind the lens. And you can also disengage the filter. So there's a little switch right here on top. And if you see the little light bulb, again, you go back to my video and I give you a whole breakdown, but the light bulb means there's no filter. That's because most film, when this camera was made, most all the film was tungsten balanced. So you were filming under incandescent lights or those tungsten lights in your house. So you leave it on the light bulb and you don't need a filter because it was, your film was balanced for those tungsten lights. Well, this film is no different. It's balanced for those tungsten lights. Now, if you flip this little switch up, you see the little sun. I am the sun. Okay, you see the sun right there. Now, what the sun does is it flips that filter in front of the film behind the lens. And it's an 85 filter, it's orange. So, so your film doesn't come out all blue when you shoot tungsten film out in the really, really bright sunlight or blue sunlight. Now what I did, full disclosure for this roll, is I left this down in this mode, which means there's no filter. So not even the cartridge itself, as super powered as it is, can tell this camera to put that filter in front of the film. Because if you're here, in daylight where there is a filter now if you put that on the sun and there it what that does is that flip that filter in front now if i put my cartridge in and it's daylight film it moves that filter out of the way well that's not happening with this roll because we have the notch down there it wouldn't happen anyway so i want the filter out of the way so i'm shooting at true 500 iso if you put a filter in front of it, it does it does sort of a half a stop to a full stop. You can deduct. So you're shooting, you want to meter at around 320 for this film. So instead, I just left it on here on the light bulb so we have no filter. <sighs> that was a lot of explaining to tell you I didn't, you didn't use the filter. So again, I went to the zoo, brought my family. And speaking of my family, somebody wants to make a very quick entrance to say hello. <laughs> They're out of school. Uh, as you may or may not know, this is Piper. She is my youngest daughter, and she is holding... Boo-boo. We call her Boo-boo. Her real name is what, though? Ellie. 
Ellie. <laughs> All right, you say hi. Hi. Say thanks for tuning in. <laughs> I love you. Well, this is actually her last name is Elephant Bean. Okay. <laughs> Bye, honey. Piper. She makes a, an appearance every now and then, so you have to deal with it because I love dealing with her. She makes me these bracelets. My oldest daughter made me this one. Piper made this one for me. So I like to showcase them a little. Anyway, so we took them all to the, blah, 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 blah. Took them all to the Brevard Zoo. We like to go there, have a little fun. It's a little zoo. Loaded this up, took that with me, and I did a little fixing of the film. I had to adjust the, uh, the white balance a little bit because I had some blue tones to it. Uh, adjusted the levels a bit, added a little, tiny bit of saturation. And really quick, uh, when I process the film myself, I use my homebrew ECN2 mix. Yep, did a video on that too. Full, full breakdown. Uh, my film overlapped a little bit in the tank. It's not very common that that happens to me. Uh, I don't know if I was just in a rush or if something just got crazy in the spiral or I left. The, I don't know what happened, but I did get a bit of overlap and I, and I kind of lost about eight feet of the front of the film. So I don't know how much of it I'm going to leave in when you see this. But if you see some black, like, you know, splotches and whatnot at the beginning, that's because that, that film was touching on against itself like that and it didn't get processed. So it turned out black or white splotchy. So that's what that is. I'll cut most of it out, but you may see a little bit at the beginning. Here's the film. So guys, this film has so much latitude to it. And by latitude, I mean you got a lot of back and forth. You can overexpose it by a couple of stops and even underexpose it by a couple of stops, maybe one, maybe two. Uh, but definitely overexposing the film doesn't really affect it too much. So, so when we say, can you shoot 500T? in one of these cameras that doesn't really need her for 500T, I'm gonna say yes, you can, absolutely. I already knew that, I've done it quite a few times, but now you know you can do it. Whew. Hope I got my 
point across. That was just a quick, uh, sort of a little uh, showcase to let you know um, that you can do it. And I hope you enjoyed that little demonstration. If you did, you can do me. Looks like I'm kind of going in and out of frame. I got the little screen over there and I can see maybe I didn't adjust it high enough. Am I cutting the top of my head off? You probably like that. If you like it, do me a favor. <laughs> Just tap the like button for me. It makes a lot of sense for me. Not sense like that. I don't get a lot of sense out of this. But anyway. Uh, and if you think I've earned it. Right there. Mm -hmm. Do it. I got a found film series that's fun for the whole family. We do a lot of old films that were shot many years ago. And we process them and show them to you. Right here on this channel. I got another fresh batch in. It's Kodachrome so I'm not expecting a lot. But I got that coming. Uh, I do have a found film coming within the next few days. 16 millimeter. Stick around, subscribe, and you know, hit the bell so you know when that uh, that found film hits the airways, these popular airways. And until the very next time, and it's coming, like I just said, that I see all your beautifully shining faces. Not shining because you need makeup, but happy. Whew. Mm -hmm. There's the one. I'll see all of you on the very, very next go-around.